Greetings, brethren. I want to show you something. While this video is especially for those who advocate for the Santana Temple, um, advocate for Luciferianism or Satanism, you, it is the truth. You are being lied to. They tell you that this will liberate you, but it will only put you in bondage. That one thing is for sure. And Satan is the, the king of deceivers. And you think, well, the, I'm just trying to get away from um, the religious people, the oppression of religious people that have put on me, put on um, atheists or non-believers throughout the years. And uh, you're just uh, want to go your own way. But actually, this is not going to liberate you. It will only put you into bondage. Now, I just want to provide you a um, provide you a little message that uh, will actually show you the truth, and not uh, that you're actually being lied to. Not that God is the one lying. The devil would actually want to make you think that the God is actually the, the enemy, and he's the good guy. He was the good guy in all this. So. Just listen, stay tuned, and listen to what I have to say. So, I've known about the, I've heard about the Satanic Temple and the um, other organizations like the Church of Satan before. Um, and I think mainly it's the Satanic Temple, which is Luciferian. Luciferians are, they divorce, that they really they divorce the the idea that satan is an evil character that he is really um a, a eternal beating being it's for them it's just the principle of um rebelling against um you know conservative you know old time beliefs and and uh searching for truth you know that's they it's enlightenment to search for truth, truth of the universe, basically. So um, they don't really center that on Satan. The Satan's just the principle, principle of wisdom and um, rebelling against um, authoritarian, um, you know, old conservative views. So also. I just want to show you guys that uh, this has been going on for a couple of years that um, they're trying to get, you know, Satanism into schools while well, after school Satan programs. So this was um, the Satanic Temple was one of the organizations. It's called After School Satan or After School Satan Club response to a, uh, a Christian club, after school club. So they're really retaliating so why i'm doing this video i've done, I heard about the Santana temple before when they uh erected the nine foot tall um baphomet statue in, in detroit um but the, this um i yeah i'm making this video because i just seen a, a video where they it's a promo video for their after school program which is just so eerie, scary, and um, it's, uh, I just want to get furious about it, but, you know, because of all the lies, you know, um, so, the, you know, the, probably more organizations are doing this, but uh, in this, uh, you know, level or extent that this organization is doing it's just like after school art, arts and crafts i don't know that's what they disguise it as um i think it's not have some elements of you know um you know wicca or something like that you see some things but so this is a flyer um to uh they have went to James Adams Elementary School in the past, and on January 23rd, there's advertising or something that um, 
or their advertising, you know, events. So, so satanic temple is not theistic religion that views Satan as a literary figure, representing a metaphorical construct, construct of rejecting tyranny and championing the human mind and spirit. After school, Satan Club does not attempt to convert children to any religious I ideology. Uh, that's a lie. They te it's teaching rebellion. Oh, I'm disguising it. They do your own thing. Live, live your own life. That's Satanism of itself. That's the lie of Satan. He wants you to go your way, make your own path, uh, make your own uh, life with, um, and uh, have like no room for God. That's that's what Satan want you to lead away on this disguise of you know. And the guys of this, that oh, we're just scientists. Well, just call your atheist club or science club or an enlightenment, enlightenment club or something. So um, based on activities and around seven fundamental tenets. So that's their flyer. So um, next I want to show you their promo video, which is on their website. Now, for those who have weak constitutions, um, you can guess what it's going to be about. Uh, you can skip this if you want. Um, I'm going to play it like a few seconds, but it's a it's like a horror show, <laughs> in in a, the guise of um, like a like a nursery rhyme or like a kids show tune, you know. Um, it's a, as scary as like one of those haunted dolls, those creepy dolls like this. Mama, mama, mama. Um, so be prepared. It is scary. Let's begin. Satan's not an evil guy. Satan's not an evil guy. How come he's not an evil guy? <laughs> See, they want, they're lying to you. Oh, it's just the Luciferian. They switch it on his head. God is the liar. God is the one that didn't, man didn't want, didn't want man to have knowledge. You know, he wanted us ignorant. Satan was just trying, he got punished because he wanted man to have knowledge. You know. But he's such an evil guy, not evil guy. He wants you to believe he's not an evil guy. He he's wants, he masquerades as an angel light. He won't, you know, he wants you to seem like he's not that bad. So you follow him. You know. I, I've posted on here before. John 8, 44. Ye are the father of the devil. The lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. He murdered Adam and Eve spiritually and physically by lying to them, by deceiving them into that they won't die. The first lie of the serpent, questioning God's, God's word. Yea, have God said, Does, did he really mean that you won't die? So he's murdered from the beginning. He bowed not the truth. There's no truth in him. He's the opposite. He's, there's no truth in him. Just like God, there's no darkness in him. Not that a polar opposite, but the, he is one that rebelled against God. Because he was lifted up with pride. Wanted to be like God. See, he, he's not an evil guy. He just wants you to learn and uh, question why he wants you to learn. He speaketh lies, he speaketh his own, for he's a liar and his father of. He's father of lies. And what does, you know, you think God's a liar and he, he's deceiving you that God's a liar and he's not the liar and uh, that. Uh, when he, when someone lies to you, he, they actually hate you. You know, 
I'll, I'll show you why, you know, Satan is actually evil guy. That he wants you to believe that he is not so bad. He, he wants you to flip the narrative that well, God is the one that was evil because I only I was only wanting to give them knowledge. So why why punish me? I was only giving them knowledge. No, he was teaching them to to disobey. He wanted sin, corruption, death to come into the world. That's why he didn't want them to partake in. Well, they he gave them the, the tree for choice, so they're not robots. But they didn't. He said not to because he commanded because they were innocent. He provided everything for them. They, they didn't have to work. Their food, they, they, they had fruit everywhere. They were comfortable. All they had to do is pick the fruit. They didn't have to work for it. It was fed. It was perfect. And then he, they, they said, well, it's the key. The point is disobedience. He, he did not, he wanted to keep them from sin. So, when when um, Satan says, well, he's not a bad guy, he just wanted knowledge, they just want a man to have knowledge, and that um, you're not, you surely won't die. There's less, um, you know, drinking to the excess will kill you kill you um will kill your body so he actually hates you when someone lies well you know abusing your body won't won't affect you he actually hates you a lying tongue hates those who are afflicted by that do who's are those who lie are to you is actually hurting you and they actually hate you. Do you have God said? Did he really mean that? That like you surely won't die? Oh, the, um, these lusts of the flesh, you know, um, like fornication. Oh, you surely won't have uh, emotional pain when you break up when things don't work. Um, abusing your body with alcoholism or what have you, excess of um, drugs or what have you, all won't affect your body. It won't cause death by abusing your body. He actually hates you. And uh, so what, what is the truth here? Was it that God didn't want man to have knowledge? No, he wanted not them not to experience, keep them from the experience evil. They know from good from wrong because God ex commanded them. How if they didn't have the power to do right from no right from wrong, you know? Why would he the command them? kind of useless they wouldn't know um, like disobeying God is, is bad <laughs> but it's not the knowledge it's experiencing sin all the effects of sin keeping you from death keeping you from disease Genesis 2 17 but the tree of knowledge good and evil thou shalt not eat of it and the day you shall eat, you shall surely die. And the Lord God said, "It is good. It is not good that the man, that man should be alone. I'll make him a helpmeet, a helper for him. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and brought them to Adam, and to see what he should call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof." So he knew he had knowledge. He could tell apart the differences of each species of animal. 
You know what kind of animal it was. He knew what a bird, he could recognize a bird from, differentiating from a bird from a cow. So it's not the knowledge, not knowing anything, but not having the experiential knowledge of evil. Um... So Genesis 3, 7, 3, and the eyes of them, 3, 17, 13, and the eyes of them were both opened, and they were they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking the garden in the cool of day, and Adam and Eve hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of garden, of the garden. And Lord God said unto Adam, said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard the voice in the garden. I was free because I was naked to him myself. So this doesn't really make any sense. Um, they're not. They were naked, but they they covered themselves, and you know. So yeah, it was the shame of disobedience. That's what they were doing. They, they were shame. They're trying to hide themselves. Trying to hide themselves. So he's confessing that. That he knew he wasn't innocent in you. And he said, well, Who told thee thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree where I commanded thee not to should not eat? And the man said, The woman who gave us to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. So he passed my blame. The woman wasn't there when God gave this commandment. So, the shame of disobedience. So let's go on. So there's no hell. Another lie. He's an imaginary friend who can teach us how to live. That's all part of it. He doesn't exist. But he teach you how to live. Yeah, to crawl after your lust, to go after your lust and commit sin. To fall to fall off the cliff into the abyss. Yes, walk according to your laws. You were dead in trespasses in the time past. You walk according to the force of the, the prince of the air, which is Satan. Now work in the children of judgment, disobedience. Among whom we all had our conversation in times past, lusts of our flesh, fulfilling desires of the flesh and of the mind, were by nature and children of wrath, even as others. So, yeah, he'll teach you how to live. That he wants you to fall after lust, to to hurt yourselves emotionally, psychologically, and physically, and fornication. You know, when these relationships don't work, it pays a toll on you. And living it up, alcoholism, it pays a toll on your body. He just wants you to bring you to death and physical death and spiritual death. That's what he wants you to do. He, he's inviting you. He's like a he's like a wolf there. He's inviting you. Oh, come to me. I, I'm your friend. With a big old smile on his face while he's saying it. Oh, come on. I'm your friend. I won't hurt you. Then he comes and devours you like a sheep. Um, you know, I just want to talk. <laughs> I just want to be your friend. Then he, then he eats you for supper. So he, so lust. 
he lusts. He's um, to rebel against God, to blaspheme God, to to spit in God's face. This lust comes a sin, and sin brings forth death, both physical and spiritual. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then, then when lust hath conceived, it will bring forth death, sin, and sin, when it's finished, it brings forth death. So, who, you know, who is liberating you? God or Satan? Satan is trying to bring you back into bondage, bring you further into bondage, both physical on this earth, bondage captive to to this, these uh, vices that are actually hurting you, killing you. The, the God is the one that's delivering you from the bondage of this corruption. Eight, Romans 8.21, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into glorious liberty of the children of God. God is the one that's liberating you. Uh, Satan is not liberating you. Yeah, he, he's liberating you from, from all standards to go your own way, to bring you to a bondage of death, both physical and spiritual. But God is the one that's liberating you from this death. Satan's job is to keep you into this death. And the, into this despair. Christ is the one that that is the one that sets you free from this bondage of sin, of this lust, of death. Stand fast, therefore, with liberty, with Christ hath made us free, and tangle not again. With the yoke of bondage. So who who are who is setting you free? Not Satan. Christ is setting you free. The bondage of the sin, from disease and sickness and sorrow and pain and wars and hate. See the lust of the flesh. What are the lusts of flesh? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, adultery. Witchcraft, hatred, variance, hatred. So Satan wants to be, bring you into hatred. When you fall of God, you will not fulfill the lust of flesh. But the, the fruit of spirit, the, what spirit gives you, is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, and goodness and faith. Satan is not the, the lusts are not going to give you this peace, this peace of mind that you search for, this void in your life, something that's empty with inside you that you cannot fill. It's it's like a you have holes in your bucket trying to fill it with water, but you can never get it full. Satan's not giving you peace. He's bringing, he's trying to keep you in his clutches, into bondage, keep you to himself. Because Christ is the one that sets you free from all this sorrow, pain, hatred, wars, killing, hatred, disease. If you believe on Jesus Christ, he'll set you free. Then said Jesus to the Jews which believed on him, If you continue word in my word, which means believe, and then your disciples indeed, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You think Satan is the one that has the actual truth, and it's, it's just all history has actually been told by the winner. You know, it's a... No, he's setting you free from, you know, being captive to, you know, people uh, from the standards of God, you know, that you just want to, you know, live it up, not be told what to do. Well, that's not the truth. That's a lie. To you. 
He was actually lying to you. All this will hurt you. You know. And those who lie to you actually hate you. And um, if you do not come to Christ, it's more loving because more loving to tell you where he's going to go. If you do not come to Christ, you'll go to hell. That's a place that God gets rid of all the wicked because if, say if you're a father or parents, would you let your children be around like murderers and stuff like that or a pedophile? Uh, let let a pedophile um, babysit your children. No, oh, he he would. <laughs> if he has committed, you know, pedophilia, he would, and you know about it, you you will notify the authorities and get him away from children. Just like it's more loving to tell you that to get away this this pedophile, this murderer away from you as a child that God is trying to get you away from the, this murderer he doesn't want to let, let this murderer Satan be your babysitter so he's going to put all that's going to hurt his children into this and you'll be a count if you do not come to Christ you, you're a murderer you're going to get rid, be rid of, you'll go to that place. So the truth is that you're free, free from this, this destination that you're already in. Set you free from um, the, the deception, free pain, sorrow, and death. Because the truth will make you free. He's the actual truth. And if you're free, if the sun makes you free, you shall be free indeed. And that's for truth. Satan wants you to believe that he's not so bad. You know, he's not so bad. He just wants you to have fun. <laughs> have fun. Go ahead. Drink. Drink that poison. Drink that poison. It won't kill you. He just wants to bring bring you to death. That's, that's all he's trying to do. He's like that wolf. Big grin on his face. Oh, I'm your friend. Come here. I'll, I'll take care of you. I just want you out of fun. I just want you to be do, do your own thing. Get away from that that stiff God. That 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 um that person that did not want to have fun, that that boring, you know, uptight, stiff, you know. I'm just going to, uh, I'm helping you to learn. Gain wisdom. And have fun. No, he's the liar. This, these things will hurt you. And lead you to death, physical death. If you take enough drugs and overdose, that'll hurt you. And actually, if you keep on doing drugs, yeah, it, it, it plays on your health. But no, You're, you believe you want to go do your own thing. Believe these things will hurt, won't hurt you. You know, because <laughs> Satan's such, such a good guy, he's lying to you. Do your own thing. Too much alcohol won't won't hurt you. Um, living your life separate from God won't hurt you. You won't go to a place. It doesn't even exist, actually. It doesn't even exist. Um, let me pull something up real quick.
So actually, what it, it does, how it exists, but the fearful and unbelieving, the bomb of murders and whoremongers, one of the fornicators, the sorcerers and adulterers, all liars, shall have the part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You can die a second time? Yes, spiritually. Your soul. And the, this is not just, well, it, it's just a scary kind of, uh, it's a burning place. Well, you got fire and, the, and brimstone. You know, this kind of rock that stings and stuff. And it's called a second death. All those are fearful um, and unbelieving. Those that reject God, that's where you're going. It's a lie that says, well, hell's not real. So, repent while you still can. Don't put it off another, another day. Because you don't know how long you have. I don't know. You don't know if you have another day left. So repent now. Believe in Jesus Christ. That he's the son of God. And he came to die for your sins. And he rose on the third day. And there's ample proof. That he did. And history. Like Josephus. Flavius Josephus. In the first century. Wrote in 60 AD. Well 67 AD. And there's historians. Not just, you know, these weren't people, his friends that wrote this. There's a Jew, which the, the Pharisees himself, because he claimed to be God, you just see him as a blasphemer. So they wouldn't see him, they wouldn't be writing favorably about him. Then you have Romans, Roman uh, historian uh, Tacitus. He was a historical figure, and they record that he actually was he actually was crucified. That's the one thing that's for sure. So you can know that he actually died and rose again. And he showed himself alive to more than 500 people in different times. And they felt him. You know, you want to know you want actual proof? Well, people in the Bible doubted. His own disciple Thomas, he doubted. He said, "I want to, <laughs> I want to see this for myself. I want to actually handle his his uh, holes in his hands, the nail prints in his hands, and feel the the gash in his side. I want to see it for myself. Then I'll believe that he rose from the dead." And Jesus, Jesus said, he he appeared to him with the rest of the disciples. He said, here, handle my hands. And feel my side. You know, a spirit doesn't have um, flesh and bone. I'm here. I actually rose from the dead. Believe. He said, he stopped doubting and he said, my Lord and my God. He said, blessed are those because you have seen. But he says, blessed are those who have not seen but yet believe. So, so even the Bible is not all, you know, yes men. They are so skeptical of this too. And they they had physical proof that he, you know, he rose again. And yeah, they had proof. I mean, how could any, they had proof that he actually died. Of the, he was whipped to a bloody pulp. And no one, and um, he was nailed to the cross. No man can actually survive that. He would have to have died. And they seen him physically. They handled him physically and seen him. So don't put it, the salvation off for any minute. Repent. Believe that he, he is the Son of God. That he came and died for your sins. For a payment sentence to set you free from this death. 
set you free from this death to live with him forever. And you shall be saved that you believe that he died, rose again on the third day. Believe and trust that this was done to save you. That uh, because of this sin, this, this atrocious, you know, violation of his law, deserved death, the death penalty, but he took the death penalty to, in our stead. He was willing to take that death penalty upon himself so we didn't have to die, so we can forever live forever with him. Made a way. All you have to do is accept that that offer that you just have to believe and accept his gift of salvation. You shall be saved. So I wish you the best. Wish you would heed my warning, my uh, encouragement to seek out what is actually the truth, to think about this, to really think about this. You know, it's not, it's not a light thing. It's really important. Don't put it off any anymore. So get into dig into the truth, search for the truth, and uh, search for yourselves. Is this guy who you claim to be? And uh, I wish you the best in finding whoever this Jesus Christ is. So we'll see you next time. Thank you and take care.